Hey guys, Mike here, bringing you another concrete floor pour. So if you're new to my channel, my channel is all about concrete stuff and epoxy stuff. So we pour a lot of concrete flat work, pool decks, sidewalks, floors, slabs, stamp concrete. So if you like that stuff, please go down there and hit subscribe. What we're doing today is we're pouring a 28 by 24 garage floor. And we're pouring it for the foundation guy, the guy that did the concrete walls. He's actually helping us today. You'll see him here, mag and mag floating some of these edges. Um, those those are called we call those frost walls. There he is over there in the right hand corner. That's Jim. So Jim comes in, he does the foundation, and then the excavator comes back and he fills it all back with dirt, backfills it, compacts it, and then Jim calls us to come do the floor. So he hires us just for labor to pour and finish the concrete floors. Now his walls. Because we live in, in Maine, we get a lot of frost that goes down about four feet. So those concrete walls go down into the ground about four feet. And he he's leaving about a foot of it sticking up. So he's got about a five foot wall there. He does most of that work by himself. He does have another guy that helps him a little bit. His name's Harvey. If you've watched some of my other videos, you've seen Harvey. Harvey helps us pour some of the concrete floors also. So he's a... Harvey's like a superman of concrete. He can do it all. <laughs> now, what we're doing is, you know, when Jim Jim orders the concrete here, he orders a 3,500 PSI mix with the fiber mesh in it. And that's the mix he likes to use on his floors. So we use that mix on all his floors. And we're just getting the concrete poured out. We're pouring a 4-inch thick floor here. The, the sand they used in there was packed really, really good and leveled. So... It's got a really good sub base. This thing's not going to get wet underneath. There's not going to have any moisture come up through it. They put drainage in there too. So they take care of all the moisture in there. For you guys wondering why there's no vapor barrier or why there's no rebar in here. It's just when you pour a concrete floor inside a frost wall like this, uh, the floor is not going to go anywhere. The, the rebar and the wire will help hold the concrete together if it does crack. But it's it's not going to make the concrete stronger i mean we're using 3500 psi concrete and the wire or rebar in there doesn't make it 4000 psi concrete it's still 3500 so the the basic idea of that is if if it, it is going to crack and move that stuff's going to hold it together which you know the fiber mesh helps with that a little bit but being inside a frost wall like this there's no place for it to go and then after we get done power trial on this today, we're going to saw cut our contraction joints. So if it does crack, it's more, more than likely going to crack right in those contraction joints. <clears throat> the only thing we really have to worry about is if this thing is going to settle. You know, if the excavator didn't do a good job compacting this while he was backfilling, then there's a chance it could settle. And that's where, you know, some, some rebar in this might help hold it together a little bit better as if the floor settles but these guys that did the excavation here they you know they had to backfill the inside of this up about four feet so they put in about eight to twelve inches of, of gravelly sandy dirt then they compact that then they put in another eight to twelve inches and compact that so they they compacted in lifts as they go so this thing's not going to settle at all we you know we're pretty careful about who we work behind because what shows is if something goes wrong with the floor let's say let's say the the floor does settle well it shows on our floor it looks like something's wrong with our floor we're we're really i mean the culprit could be in the excavator that didn't do uh, good compaction so we like to make sure that when we go to pour a floor on someone else's work that we know it was done right we know most of the guys that we work behind here and in, in our uh, state we know most of them because we've been doing this a long long time so we're just getting this screeded we're screeding this by hand today we're not using our our power screed or our vibra screed with this this has three inches of slope from the back towards the front so most of the garages that we pour I'd say probably 80% of the garages we pour have a slope to them like this they don't they don't have a center drain. Uh, we'll do a few with center drains still, but most people just have them slope out the front. And I don't know, they seem to work all right. My, I mean, I, my garage slopes three inches from back to front. And when, 
when I drive in there with my vehicles and they drip off, the water tends to want to run out the doors. I've never had any trouble with the water freezing the door shut or anything like that. So, I mean, it, it seems to work fine with, with my garage. And that's what most people tend to want to do here. I mean, a lot of these places we go like this. This is this is kind of right on the ocean and the grade's pretty flat. So there's no real way to run a, a, a pipe out the foundation wall and just have it drain to put a center drain in this. So the best... The best uh, idea for this one was just to slope it out the front. We also poured the house here too today. That I'll have that on a video if you want to watch that. Th on that floor we did use the vibrating screeds. So I'll have that pop up at the end of the video if you want to check that out. That was a pretty good sized house floor. That's Luke and Darren. Uh, Darren's on the left. There's Luke there in the green shirt. The dark green shirt. Darren's in the bright green shirt. And that's Tia, that's my daughter. This is basically our crew for the summer. Um, you know, there's four of us. We pour concrete every single day, at least one big floor, if not a couple, a house and garage like this. And then, you know, we'll power trial it, and then we'll go get some other stuff ready. So most days are pretty busy. Our busy season is, it starts in April. You know, temperatures start to get above freezing in April. And then we'll go really hard from April until usually November-ish, you know, Thanksgiving, 1st of December, something like that, where we pour pretty much every single day, you know, five days a week, sometimes Saturdays if we have to, depending on what the weather's doing. So we're trying to squeeze 12 months of work into about eight and a half months. So we're just, we're just, we're just busy, busy, busy. Probably... You know, it, it, you, when I was younger, it used to be kind of stressful for me. Now that I've been doing it a long, long time, it, uh, the, um, the amount of work doesn't bother me quite so much. I'm actually, you know, obviously I'm grateful for it. But, you know, trying to just keep everybody busy. Like these guys, these builders, they want to start here tomorrow. I mean, they're just waiting. They're itching to get going. So we like to get the floors in most of the time before the builders start. So we're trying to, you know, we're trying to keep them happy. And then same thing tomorrow, the job we got to go to the next day, you know, those guys are itching to get started. So what happens if it rains, you know, then we got to cancel, then that pushes them off another day. So we try to keep everybody as happy as we possibly can when, when you got a list of, you know, 40 to 50 jobs on your list and they're all ready to go, you know, how do you, how do you keep up with that? That's probably the, one of the biggest struggles for me is when the list gets really, really big. You know, everybody wants you to do their work because they, they trust you, they know you do a good job, they don't have to babysit you, they you, they know you're going to do what you say, you charge them a fair price, um, all those reasons and more that, you know, people want to hire you, and your my job is just, hey, I want to keep those guys happy, you know, these are our customers, They're, they call us back over and over and over again. What, what kind of struggles do you guys go through? Let me down, know down in the comments, I mean... You guys in different parts of the country, some of you guys work, you know, 12 months a year. You don't even get a break. You know, we get, I, I call it a break in the winter, but it's just so cold that we just physically can't do anything sometimes on some days. But then, you know, all those jobs add up. These guys that do walls, they can, they can do walls longer. They, you know, their season's a little bit longer because it's easier to go pour a wall in the freezing cold weather and cover it than it is to a floor, you know, and there's, there's less likely of a chance that it's going to freeze and something's going to go wrong. So the guys that do walls can keep working and then, uh, you know, later in the season and then come early spring, you know, they say March, April, these guys want to get these floors done. They've been building these places all, all winter long and they're ready to get the floors done. So bang, everything starts off with a bang really, really quick. But Anyway, guys, that's how we get this floor. This was a 28, 24 garage floor, sloped out the front three inches. There's, there it is, both loaded. We'll give it a, an hour or two, then we'll power trial it, get it sawed, and we'll be done with this one for today. Take Check out the house pour right here, guys. Thanks a lot for watching. We'll see you on the next one.